Hey everyone and welcome to The Year Was, the podcast all about today that gives you just enough information to effectively be that guy at the party, causing all your friends to question, hey, who invited you? Like, seriously, why are you here? I'm your host, Michael Montalvo, and for the next few minutes we will swim through the river of time to try and find out what makes today truly unique. In this episode, we examine the events that occurred June 9th. Do you remember Merry Melodies? It started in 1931 and was part of the Looney Tunes series and had Bugs, Daffy, Porky, and the rest of the tunes in cartoon shorts. You probably remember it. But what about Silly Symphony? Silly Symphony started all the way back in 1929 and was produced by none other than the Walt Disney Company. Silly Symphony was different because it didn't have reoccurring characters, instead opting for self-contained single stories, with a few notable exceptions. The shorts ran for 75 cartoons made between 1929 and 1939 and was used by Disney to experiment with different techniques to enhance the company's story, characters, in animation. The series would go on to win seven Academy Awards during its run, much like the one won by Helen Mirren for her work in 2006's The Queen. But perhaps one of the most notable appearances, if not the most notable, and certainly one of the longest lasting, was that of a simple duck. The year was 1934, and on this day, June 9th, The Wise Little Hen, the debut appearance of Donald Duck, was first released. I know you're dying to know, so here's what the story's about. A hen owns a farm and is looking for help with work that needs to be done around the farmyard, most notably planting her corn. She goes around to her neighbor, Peter Pig, but Peter complains about having a bellyache and leaves. She then goes to her neighbor, Donald Duck, and he also claims to have a bellyache and leaves. So together with her chicks, the hen plants the corn and it grows. After the corn is grown and it's time to harvest, the hen once again goes to her quote-unquote friends and again asks them for their help, only this time in harvesting the crop. Again, they both pretend to be sick with stomach aches and again, They leave her to harvest the corn with her chicks, which, for some reason, have not grown at all. Or maybe there are new ones. I don't know how chickens work. But this is not before Peter slams the door so hard to the clubhouse that the wall falls and the hen sees them all well, shaking hands, celebrating their scheme to get out of work. I wonder if that will come back to bite them. Spoiler alert, it will. So now that the corn has been harvested, the narrators who have been singing about what has been going on this entire time switch gears and start telling us about the many things you can do with corn. Things like cornbread, corn on the cob with melting butter, cream corn, corn soup, boiled corn, roasted corn, muffins, cakes, corn pones, fritters. That's about it. Enough food to feed and stuff an army. But again, the hen has a problem. Who in this wide, wide world will help her eat her corn? Her chicks for sure, even though they are still baby chicks, and it takes approximately 100 days for corn to grow, but Some chickens grow to eating size in approximately six weeks, which, if my math is right, is only about 42 days. And those chickens were already a few days old because, at the start, they were wearing shoes and helping plant and kicking dirt and... stuff. So anyway, the hen decides she will be the bigger animal in this situation and again goes to her friends and asks the question, Will you help me eat my corn? They claim to be starving and are weak with hunger and need that corn to live. So the hen is all like, sure, no probs, and brings out a single basket for the two. 
They rush over and Peter takes the basket for himself. Hilarity ensues as the two fight and then proving that violence and laziness is never the answer, unless the question is, what's never the answer? And it is revealed that the basket does not contain various corn-related foods, but instead castor oil for their upset tum-tums. The two look at each other in despair and then proceed to kick each other in the butt repeatedly as punishment for their misdeeds. Pretty good, right? Walt Disney apparently created the character of Donald Duck for voice actor Clarence Nash after hearing him in an audition doing various bird noises. Disney walked in and said, That fellow sounds like a duck. Let's keep him in mind if we ever create a duck character. And the rest was history. Soon after, Donald was created and this short would appear, beginning the career of one of the longest lasting characters in pop culture or film or television. Nash would go on to voice Donald for the next 50 years, only occasionally allowing another actor to portray him. But it wasn't only Donald that Nash would voice. He would go on to create the voice of Donald's love, Daisy Duck, and of Donald's nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Although they would not retain Donald's trademark voice for long, instead going on to develop their own. As for Donald's personality, he's a bit of a hothead. But a large reason for that is because of his friend's inability to understand him. When this happens, his frustration gets the better of him and he becomes angry. Just not Hulk angry. I always think it's interesting to see the first appearance versus the most recent appearance of a character. It's interesting to see just how far they've come and how much they've changed in appearance, attitude, and more. For example, his original appearance sported a long beak and skinny features, a bit different than the short-billed, pear-shaped duck we all know and love today. He also went from unhelpful neighbor to war propaganda film star, to having friendly rivalries, to adventurer, and more. Continuing to this day with a career that most people would die for. But as I often say with these types of episodes, it all started with insert relevant title. That's going to do it for us today. If you like this podcast and want to hear more, give us a rate and a review. That helps me out and helps steer this in a direction that is hopefully good for all. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the Year Was audio version on your podcast app of choice. You can find me on social media and at YouTube at the Apple Cider Club. And as always... I want to thank the Tim Kreitz Band for our musical theme, and thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.